Senator Marshall, you have four minutes. Thanks, Cahirla. Minister, thank you for your attendance to the House. I rise to ask the Minister for Justice to provide this update on the publication of a proposed bill to provide for enhanced cooperation with legacy inquests in Northern Ireland. Minister, the Kingsmill massacre was a heinous crime. It was an affront to humanity, an attack on all the good people that lived and worked in a small, sleepy townland of Kings Mills near White Cross in South Armagh. I remember this atrocity vividly as an eight-year-old boy growing up a few miles from where the carnage took place. It was described as one of the deadliest mass shootings of the Troubles in a vicious period of tit-for-tat murders in a small geographical area where the scale of loss of human life during this period was unimaginable. On January 5, 1976, on a dark cold winter's evening, a minibus with workmen travelling home after a day's work was stopped on the side of a lonely country road by armed gunmen. Workmen were ordered out and lined up against the minibus. The one Catholic on the minibus was ordered to run away, and the 11 remaining passengers were faced with summary execution and slaughtered in cold blood. No self-defence and no chance. One man survived, Alan Black, despite having been shot 18 times. And he survived to this day, no doubt reliving the horror many, many times over on a daily basis. Minister, the local community was in a state of shock. Last week in Belfast, Justice Brian Sherrod heard representation from stakeholders on the ongoing debate of whether the inquest into Kings Mills should name the two deceased suspects in this case, two individuals who were in receipt of the On the Run comfort letters. Justice Sherrod also made reference to the Birmingham bombings inquest, where senior IRA figures in Dublin had authorised the naming of four deceased suspects involved in these bombings, names that the inquest subsequently published. He appealed for anyone with information in relation to Kings Mill to release this to the families or to the authorities and give answers to some of the questions that have tormented the families for over four generations. During the hearing, counsel for the coroner, Sean Doran QC, noted that Dublin authorities give assurance that a bill allowing the coroner to travel south to question guard officers would be progressed in September 2018. Unfortunately, there appears to be little or no advancement of this. Alan Keane, QC, counsel for some of the families, made the point that families had lost hope partly as a result of the apparent lack of appetite for Dublin to move on this, and a concern that any further written questions regarding the massacre to the Dublin authorities would actually be a distraction from the lack of progress on the bill. When this was reported last week in the Belfast newsletter, Philip Bradfield noted that the newsletter had actually contacted the Irish Department of Justice, who stated that drafting of this bill was, and I quote, at an advanced stage and would be published very soon. Furthermore, criticism was also levelled at the Northern Ireland Office by a failure to present a witness to provide evidence on the On the Run scheme, even though contact had been made as far back as February. This atrocity goes down as one of the darkest episodes in the Troubles across the province. Families torn apart with grief and loss have felt abandoned by the state on both sides of the border. These families, as passive onlookers to other inquests and inquiries, and namely the Bloody Sunday inquiry, Bally Murphy, Birmingham pub bombings, and as recently as yesterday, with developments in the Daniel Hegarty case, they feel completely abandoned and left behind, with a sense of unfairness and a feeling that there is absolutely no regard for their redress, closure for them, answers to their questions, and an opportunity to get whatever small degree of comfort or closure they rightly deserve, at this stage, 43 years later. These people are living this horror on a daily basis. It never goes away. It never will go away. The wrongs cannot be righted or the loved ones returned. But what can be done is to hasten the progress of this bill, to assist with answers to questions, to assist with the legal process, and to demonstrate to these families that there is no hierarchy of loss or pain or suffering, that there is no hierarchy of victims, and to demonstrate that all victims' families deserve answers and closure. Minister, I would like to ask you today, where is this bill? Why have there been delays, and when can this House expect to see advancement of this bill? Can the Minister give assurance to the families of King's Mills that no stone will be left unturned to answer their questions and facilitate the coroner in his attempt to fill the information gaps in this 43-year struggle fighting for answers? Furthermore, I appeal to the inquest at King's Mills in Belfast to release names of the suspect in this case. In closing, if there is any degree of humanity or compassion in those responsible for this atrocity, no, they should see fit to authorise the release of the suspect's names. The release of names in the Birmingham inquest has set a precedent, not only to identify those responsible, but to take the suspicion and stigma away from those mistakenly labelled as perpetrators in the locality. No doubt this one act was a defining moment in the history of South Armagh, 
and drove a wedge of mistrust between communities that would take decades to heal. This bill will not bring back the deceased, but it will go some way to reassure these families that they are as important as others, and like others, they too deserve answers. Thank you, Senator Marshall. Minister. Thanks, Ker Herdock. Um, I, want to, uh, I want to thank Senator Ian Marshall for raising this important matter, which uh, I understand refers to the Criminal Justice International Cooperation Bill. Uh, I want to acknowledge Senator Marshall's work on these issues. Uh, indeed, Senator Marshall's membership of this House is important. He provides an invaluable perspective on many issues, not least those concerning the legacy of the dark days of horrific violence on our island. Uh, I want to thank him for giving me the opportunity to update this House on an issue that he and I have discussed. Uh, indeed, I had the opportunity of visiting the site of the King's Mills massacre on the country road uh, as uh, outlined a moment ago by Senator Marshall. I had the opportunity to reflect uh, on the poignant monument that is there uh, near White Cross. Uh, I want to acknowledge Senator Marshall's deeply personal recollection of the horrors of the atrocity at King's Mills. I want to assure him of my sincere personal commitment to ensuring the Irish Government plays its part in implementing the commitments of the Stormont House Agreement, the negotiation of which I was closely involved in myself as Minister for Foreign Affairs and Trade. Uh, I published the general scheme of the Criminal Justice International Cooperation Bill in December 17, following approval by Government. This proposed new legislation is an important further step in the Government's ongoing commitment to implement measures to address the legacy of the Troubles on this island and to support victims of the Troubles and their families. In addition to enhancing the cooperation provided to coroners' inquests in Northern Ireland into historical troubles-related deaths, these proposals will further underpin the Government's commitment to full cooperation with the framework of measures set out in the 2014 Stormont House Agreement. The proposed legislation will provide for a mechanism for coroners in Northern Ireland who are conducting inquests into troubles-related deaths to hear testimony from Garda Síochána witnesses under existing Irish law. The Bill would also extend the provisions of the Garda Síochána Act 2005 to allow the Garda Commissioner to enter into cooperation agreements with non-police law enforcement bodies outside of the state. This will be an important element in our cooperation with those legacy institutions to be established under the Stormont House Agreement, namely the Historic Investigations Unit and the Independent Commission on Information Retrieval. I must emphasise that this legislation is seeking to enhance further cooperation in addition to the considerable assistance which has already been facilitated by the Government and the Garda authorities. In respect of the ongoing inquest into the horrific murders at King's Mill, can I say the Government in June 2015 approved specific legal arrangements to enable the transfer of material to the, to the Northern Ireland coroner. These specific legal measures were made in response to the absence of an existing formal legal mechanism which would have allowed the Garda authorities to transfer relevant material outside of this jurisdiction. In accordance with those legal arrangements, the Garda authorities have provided the Northern Ireland coroner with all relevant documents in their possession, have responded to his follow-up queries. I want to strongly agree with Senator Marshall when he speaks about there being no hierarchy of victims. He's right, and I agree with that fully. The bill is now in an advanced stage of drafting. A considerable amount of legal work has been undertaken to ensure that once enacted, this legislation will deliver on the Irish Government's commitment to fully cooperate with legacy inquests in Northern Ireland. I expect to publish the bill before the summer recess. On the basis of previous experience with North-South related legislation, I would expect coherent, broad support from all sides of the House, indeed from all members of the House. I'm confident that the bill will progress swiftly through the legislative process and I will be, I will be seeking the cooperation um, of Senators uh, at that point before we uh, embark on a summer vacation. Thank you, Minister. Senator Marshall. Thanks, uh, Thank you, Minister, for, for coming here. Thank you for your, uh, your response, and I, I fully accept your response and understand that there is movement in this. I, 
as I've said, there's no hierarchy in victims, but any parent in Northern Ireland that buried a child as a consequence of the Troubles, or any child that buried a parent as a consequence of these unthinkable circumstances, it's, it's, it's an unthinkable situation. No one can bring back the victims or rewind the clock, but if we're serious about reconciliation and we're serious about an agreed future, then we must get answers to questions and some degree of closure for the families, irrespective of their background or political persuasion. Minister. Dealing with the legacy of the Troubles uh, on this island is a difficult task. Uh, there are no easy solutions. I want to emphasise, however, that the Government is and always has been fully committed to the provisions of the Stormont House Agreement on addressing the history of the violent conflict in Northern Ireland. It's a matter of regret that the political impasse in Northern Ireland has somewhat delayed the establishment of the framework of measures as set out in the Stormont House Agreement. Having said that, however, the Government remains fully committed to their implementation. We are continuing to work with the British Government and the parties in Northern Ireland to give effect to these measures. I want to agree again with what Senator Marshall has said uh, about families and the need to address these issues. At the outset of his contribution, Senator Marshall indicated that families were losing hope. Can I say here in the Shannon this afternoon, families should not lose hope. Families need answers. Families need our help. And I'm very hopeful that once the measures provided for in the Stormont House Agreement have been put in place, they will provide an opportunity for the families of the many persons killed during the Troubles to access further information about those deaths where they wish to do so. Say, in conclusion, the Criminal Justice International Cooperation Bill will be an important element of the Irish Government's commitment to this process. I look forward to bringing this legislation into this House before the summer, continuing to work with Senator Marshall uh, and colleagues uh, across the aisle here in the Senate. Thank you very much, Minister.